After the Optus and Medibank data breaches, we were warned to be extra vigilant. Sadly, though, it's too late now for Maureen, who lost her life savings in a cruel scam. But now, like many of us, she wants to learn how to protect herself against fraudsters. I can't believe that there are people in the world that would do this sort of thing. They're just horrible, horrible, horrible people. Like many 86-year-olds, Maureen is set in her ways, especially when it comes to banking. She still likes to read her balance printed in a passbook. I don't understand it, and you know what? I don't want to understand it. I'm too old. Which is why Maureen can't comprehend how anybody could be so cruel and steal her life savings. $25,000 she'd saved to take her family on a cruise, all gone in three quick transactions. 4,500, 9,950, and 9,950. I was absolutely gutted, that's the word. It all started when hackers sent Maureen's daughter, Joanne, a text message. I got a text message from Medicare saying that somebody close to me has got coronavirus and that I was to click onto this link to get a kit sent out to me. And I clicked onto that link. I thought, oh, I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have done this. I just, yeah, there was a doubt in my mind. Joanne says she clicked on the link because her colleague had just caught the virus. Put on my name, phone number and all my details and my credit card details for this kit to come, which never arrived. Weeks later, cyber criminals had done their homework. Hello? Confirmed Joanne, Joanne controlled Maureen's bank accounts. Yes and pounced on the trusting family. That is correct. I got a phone call from this man named Simon saying that we have been scammed and that he was going to transfer the money into an account with a brand new BSB number and a brand new account number. So-called Simon convinced Joanne he was there to help secure her mother's money. But I was marching up and down here saying, Joanne, this isn't right, this is not right, there's something wrong. But Joanne said all the particulars were in place. Suddenly, Maureen had just $300 to her name. I thought, how the heck am I going to pay my bills? So I thought, oh, I'll, ha I'll have to go begging, you know, go with my bill in my hand and say, look, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask you for extra time which I've never had to do that in my whole life, never. It's so easy for them to do it. It's just scary how they can do it. We called in cyber security expert, Martin Boyd. Who's that knocking at my door? <laughs> Dan. Hello, so glad to see you. Yes, I'm Martin from Vertex Lovely Cyber Security. Lovely to see you. Lovely to meet you too. Hello, very nice to meet you. Is there somewhere we can take a seat? Yeah, for sure. It was too late, we had lost the money. They had the audacity to invade my privacy and take all my money. We've entered a new wild west in regards to cyber attacks, um, where they can get away with this. And you've got to be on your edge and aware and ready. And we've reached this point where now... Martin gives them tips to better protect themselves um, online. And the human brain is not designed for remembering passwords. Starting with having a password manager. So with that password manager, you can then have random passwords that are different for every single login. And multi-factor authentication. What that does is you've got your password that you use to log in, but it uses something else, um, which could be a token or an SMS to your phone, it could be a token um, to your email. And what that means is from a cyber attacker's perspective, it makes it a lot harder because for them to log in, they need to get your password as well as that token. Perhaps the biggest lesson to learn SMS. from Martin. And now they've identified you as, in short, uh, an easy target. Yeah. Um, and so you'll continue to get more SMSs and messages and even emails and even in the mail. Is it possible that these people will have another go and try to get more from my account? It's not just possible, it's almost guaranteed. So, so how can we stop this from happening again? The first is, unfortunately, um, 
you have to assume everything is suspicious. How do we know you're genuine? <laughs> That's a great question. What you need to do is, is check and double check. And in some cases, you need to kind of hold off and delay doing things. It is really good to have a support network or support people you can go to to check and ask and verify yes. these things. It's like a, a Google search engine for data breaches. Have I Been Pwned is a website where you enter your email or phone number to search if and when your personal information has been caught up in a data breach. Troy Hunt created the concept in 2013. I thought at the time, look, I sort of live in this world. If I didn't know about this, I wonder how many other people are out there that just don't know that they've been exposed in a breach. What's your one piece of advice from your experience? Don't be an idiot. Don't trust anybody. Don't trust anyone. And as for the hackers... Now, Dimity, I'm not allowed to swear <laughs> on TV. You know that. What do I think of them? I can't understand them. I cannot understand them. I keep saying, how do they sleep at night? Somebody said to me, quite easily, they have no conscience. They certainly don't. And wouldn't you like to know what Maureen really wanted to say to the hackers? But in some good news, Maureen's bank has finished its investigation and refunded all her money. And even better, she's now looking at rebooking that cancelled family holiday.